Hello, folks. It's Bradley J, and welcome to Bradley J Travel. It's one of the things I've been doing. I've been pretty busy lately. I'm, I'm surprised how busy I am in retirement. I say retirement because I'm super busy. I don't feel retired. I get to do a lot of creative stuff now. So a friend asked me questions about Croatia, and I um, figured I'd answer them with a slideshow. And I'll, I'm not going to talk about anything except my experience in Croatia because I'm just going to not go and talk about the other places you can go that I did not go. I'm just going to share my experience and maybe what I would do differently or do again. And I'm going to do it with it. Here, here's a slideshow. I'm going to just kind of wing it, share, share screen, share screen. I get to choose the screen. There it is. Share screen. All right. Now let's bring up a slideshow. I believe that I'm sharing the screen. So, I mean, what I can do is actually put this window down here and keep this window up here. There. And we'll start. We're starting in Dubrovnik, and I'm going to tell my story. I'm not going to talk about each photo. And this will be Dubrovnik pretty much until I tell you it's somewhere else and begin let me get this there uh, i don't think you heard the audio but i did and it's disconcerting so these are not edited photos or videos these are just uh as they are in the camera just so you can see what it's like a lot of them are um photos and those will be easier, I guess. Here's a photo of Dubrovnik. Oh, no, it's a video of Dubrovnik. Dubrovnik is right on the Adriatic. It is the pearl of the Adriatic. And it is beautiful medieval town, medieval city, if you will. And uh, this is a bar right on the, the walls of the old city. I'll play this video in a minute. So my uh, point of entry was actually not in Croatia, but it was in Bosnia. I went to Sarajevo. I like three-legged trips, went to Sarajevo, and then on down to Croatia, took a left and went to Dubrovnik, and here we are in Dubrovnik. Dubrovnik is, of course, I shouldn't say of course, because I'll just say it's a place that is a must-see if there's such a thing. You can't go to Croatia and not see Dubrovnik. Dubrovnik is a touristy town, but you go with that notion, with that knowledge, with that expectation, and so you're not surprised. And this was September, by the way. People say, when's the best time to go? Well, not summer. Probably September or spring. Probably April or April or September, I guess. This is the town itself. A lot of tourists. This is, uh, uh, look how smooth the, the stone is from people walking on it. Very old town. One, one thing that's good about it, even though there are a lot of tourists, is that they have a lot of facilities for tourists. This is the view of part of the town, a little harbor there, from the walls of the old city. If, if it seems shockingly beautiful, well, it is. It's even more beautiful when you're there because you can hear the crashing surf and all. You can see it wasn't really overrun with tourists in September. You've seen this in the video as well just a little bit ago. It's a breezy up there. You saw that in the video as well. You have a lot of opportunities to look at the rooftops in, in Dubrovnik, and I love them. Can't get enough of them. There will be a video of a thunderstorm coming up. More rooftops. I won't show you too many pictures of rooftops, but you know you're in a foreign place when the roof, the roofs look like this. Somewhere there got to be a lot of those tiles stockpiled. Oh yeah, here's a here's a little bit of a moment in Dubrovnik, and I gotta I gotta get to my story. And part of my story is I was looking for a place to stay. I don't I did not book ahead of time, and I don't regret that at all. But in this case, things got down to the wire, and it was night, and I still didn't have a place. There was an 
an information tourist place where you you go, you can go, and a lot of towns have these where they're aware of the local townspeople who have places to stay, both hotels and uh, other, and you go there and you tell them kind of what you're looking for, how much you want to spend, and they will hook you up. They say, oh, this is Mrs. So-and-so's place. This will be good here. You go here. It'll be so-and-so. It'll be this amount of money. And while I'm waiting, it's raining. I'm waiting in the entryway either to get in, in, in line to, to have my turn to talk to the people, or maybe I've talked to them, gotten a place, and haven't departed for it yet. But there, there, is a, there was a thunderstorm. Pretty cool, right? All right, we move on to... No, uh, I believe this is Parast. And generally, these are in order, but this is kind of out of order. I believe it's Paras, but I can't be sure. I've taken so many photos, and I do pretty well at labeling them. But it's not Montenegro. It might be Makarska, but probably Paras, a charming little town on the coast. Now, the way Croatia is, is a lot of coastline. Up the north is split. Down towards the south, down towards Montenegro is Dubrovnik. And there are lots of very charming towns and Lots of super nice islands in between. There are too many to name, but, you know, 15, 20 really nice islands. 10 for sure. And a lot of nice towns along the way, as I mentioned. Like Parast, Parast, and Makarska, which we'll get to. Now, i got to get to my story. I'll let you look at this for a while while I tell the story. Arrived in Sarajevo. Most people arrive in Split. But I don't... I didn't look. I didn't want to do that. So I'm a big fan of conflict cities, and Sarajevo is obviously a conflict city, and I can pack more in. So I went to Sarajevo for a day or two, then came south on the bus through Mostar. I don't have a picture of Mostar, but Mostar is worth a stop. That's another ancient spot. And then on down to Croatia. Take a left and head to Dubrovnik, which I have already shown you. This is this is Makarska, by the way, where I'm telling you the story of how I got here. Also Makarska, M-A-K-A-R-S-K-A. -A -A. Who knew that this was that beautiful? I had no idea. And I'll tell you the story of how I got here. So I went to Dubrovnik, stayed there a day or two, maybe one night, and then the next took a bus to Montenegro, another country, the next country down south, which is also... Beautiful, and it looks a lot like this. I went to Kotor in Kotor Bay. One one thing negative about Montenegro is, as I understand it, forces from Montenegro helped sh uh, maybe shell, but certainly fought against Dubrovnik in the war in in the nineties. And, and I'm not down with that, but you know, you still go there. And, and that explains, of course, why they had such a strict passport check at the border in the bus. So this is also Makarska. I'm still telling you how I got here. Came back from Montenegro. After one night, KOTOR, super small, one night's all you need. Did not have a, didn't take the bus back, but took a cab back. Shared it with some Germans. Because the bus wasn't leaving when I wanted to leave. It was going to be a long time. And I shared a cab with some Germans. And then to, not, not all the way back to Dubrovnik, but to a, another town. And at some point, we crossed the border. It seemed like the border guard had a, uh, a relationship with the cab driver because it wasn't as strict as when we came in on the bus. Now, actually, I think we did go all the We definitely did go all the way to Dubrovnik, sorry. Now, wanted to go, I don't know, it's to some point up the coast. But the bus wasn't going there when I wanted to go or when I could go. It wasn't going there for a long time, maybe not at all that night. So this is in Dubrovnik, yes. I went through the line of people buying tickets of locals and just asked for suggestions on 
what was the best town to get to? I said, if you if you were going to go to a town two hours away up the coast, what would you choose? And they said, they said, more than one said Makarska. They said, Makarska it is. Because the bus was going there and they said it was good. And the bus took quite a while. I kept thinking, are, are we here yet? Are we here yet? It was getting dark. I had no idea what this place was like. None. It could have been a rat hole. I had no idea. Arrived in dark. Still didn't really know until the next day that it looked like this. This is Makarska in, in Croatia. Also Makarska in Croatia. All up and down the coast, or for large parts up and down the coast, these the mountains come right down to the water. And the towns, I just have to, they can't get too big because the mountains are in the way. There's not much room. And that keeps them beautiful. This is, again, Makarska. Also Makarska. Don't know what these are. I know that they are orange-colored, probably some kind of fruit. Kind of the an exotic feel. This, this is a very common vibe in Croatia and in, in Greece as well. There are these promenades, stone promenades at the, at the seafront lined with palm trees. Super common thing in Europe, in certain parts of Europe, at least from Croatia to Greece. I've never been to Albania. I don't know if the, it's like this there. You never know. Also, come, also Makarska, they have these docks that go way out that, that I'm on here, as you can see, walk out on. Beautiful. There's something special about the water. Can't really define it. Maybe it's the color. Maybe it's a super calmness. I'm not sure. Don't, don't know what this big ship thing is. Okay. This is definitely Makarska because I remember this. Uh, the other thing about Makarska was great deal on a hotel. Just, I checked a couple hotels right in the main town, but across the bay, I saw this big old place and said, I'm going to go look at that one. Turns out it was, it was right. This is the view from it. And it was super, uh, super affordable. And I was thrilled. Another view. Without the feet. Still Makarska. This is interesting, these trees, right? Why are they falling over like that? Is the soil so sandy that it doesn't provide good stability? And why are they tipped all in the, kind of the same direction? Are they following the sun? Does the wind blow that way? I don't know. Right, you know, typical restaurant. The thing to get in these restaurants for me is roasted calamari. On a bed of spinach. That's what I get every time. And some cheap red wine. Just a little stubby glass of red wine. It won't cost you much. More Makarska dining. Pretty nice, right? And not crowded. Not, sorry about the duplicate there. How does that happen? Local beers. I'm all about the local beers. Product of Croatia. On these trips, beer is your friend if you drink. If you drink. Looks like it was made in Zagreb. Zagreb Baka Pivovara. And there's the town in the distance. This is the this is right near the hotel where you can kind of hang out. This is lit up at night. The water's lit, so you can see in kind of under the water. Again, this is Makarska. There's a bar in a cave. It goes way into this is just the entrance. Yeah, there's your uh, this is it right here. Roasted calamari. Simple, cheap, and good. This is uh, a waiter. <laughs> this is my vest, my go-to vest. It's a it looks like a tourist, right? It does. It's so functional with all these pockets, but it looks like a tourist. And I battle with myself. What, you know, is it better to look good or have function? And I still can't decide. Here's the 
Makarska water water lit up inside that cave I talked to you about. Black lit cave. Go figure. It's a bar in a cave. Now we move to Trogir, another charming town. Uh, uh, I was told it is better to stay in Trogir than Split. Split's the main big town. I was not thrilled with Split. It has a a Roman emperor's residence there, which has become insinuated into the town. The town kind of is partly inside that. People like to see that. I, I didn't care about that. I don't care about that stuff. I care about warrens of cobblestone streets, as, as many know. Here's also Trogir. Nice fireplace in the background. This was the hotel with a nice plaza. Lots of stones like this all over the place. Trogir Market, T-R-O-G-I-R. -R, and it's pretty easy to get to the airport from there. Lashko, which I believe is a Slovenian beer. Can't be sure. But that was my favorite. Just look at all this. this is the, these are the kind of beers I like, these Czech Pilsners. Lashko. See that up here, Staropramen, up in the upper left? That is something you need to try. That's the Czechs. That's one of the Czechs, Czech people's favorite beers. That and, well, is that it? Is that the end? No, it can't be. No. Good. More Trogir walkways. Polished by feet. Same restaurant. I believe this this might be Dubrovnik again. Sometimes it's tough to tell between Trogir and Dubrovnik. But the vibe is the same when you get into these warrens of cobblestone streets or stone streets. Charming restaurants, tables outside. Find a nook or a cranny. This is that same hotel that had the courtyard. Back to Parast, one of those small towns on the coast between Dubrovnik and Split. All right, now we get into, a, this is a different trip to um, Croatia. This is the first trip. And I just went into the peninsula. I believe it's the Istrian peninsula to Opatia. Opatia is a place where rich Viennese folks would have a summer place. And not, not Viennese, uh, Venetians, people from Venice, where uh, they built summer places here. And so way, way early on, you had the Italians coming over here. So a lot of nice buildings, as you can see, with a Venetian feel. This is Opatia, O-P-A-T-I-A. It, it tends to be a place where older folks hang out. Like if you're old and you want to go to a casino, that people that kind of person goes here. Pleasant to stroll around. Fairly heavy, heavily touristed. But you know, when you get down in the nooks and crannies, pretty charming. This is Opatia still. And more. It's tough for me to talk about my my trip and describe the pictures as well. I, I like restaurants that you go downstairs and it's all stone. And that's what this is. Pretty self-explanatory. Charming, nice weather, nice food, quiet, not expensive, beautiful. More of the same. It's interesting, folks. You know, you don't really know what to expect, especially if you've never been anywhere. But the reality of most of these places is that just it's just darn beautiful. And so, so this is Opatia in Croatia. You know, people think of Paris and other places like that. But if you dig down. You get to a place like this, and you can live like a king or queen pretty reasonably. Oh, there are more photos in this show than I thought. This is, again, Opacha in the north on a peninsula. 
I wouldn't go back. I would not go back to Opatia. If I went with somebody, I'd say, you know what? Can we not go there? It's it's kind of boring. But beautiful. That's me. One interesting note on these Dolce & Gabbana shirts. I got 22 of them. <laughs> About 22. It's Sims. Remember Sims? I got blue ones, maroon ones, black ones, gray ones, white ones. <laughs> and, and they all wore out. Sometimes I regret doing that mass shopping kind of thing. But in that case, that was a that was a winner. They were like nineteen dollars each, and you know, probably eighty dollars shirts at least. All right, here we go to a far a photo with a story coming back from flying out of split on Lufthansa. Uh, got out over Amsterdam, out over the North Sea, and the captain came on said, "Well, you know, we have a problem." We could uh, probably make it, but since Germany is our headquarters, I don't know if it was Munich or Frankfurt, but since uh, one of those is our headquarters, we're going back there and get a new plane. And this was a really good experience. It was Lufthansa. I'll t it was a good experience. I ha recently have had a, an experience that wasn't so great with Lufthansa. I don't know if I would avoid them or not, but back then, they were great. Uh, he said, we're going back. So they got all the way back. Oh, no, before before we went back, they had to dump fuel, and that's what this picture is. See that nozzle? If you're flying, you see a nozzle out the back of a wing like that. You might have wondered what that was. You might have not have realized it was a nozzle. Well, it is a nozzle, and that's what they dump fuel out of. So right out the window, this jet fuel was spewing into the atmosphere because you got to be a certain weight to land. And also, as a safety precaution, you don't want a bunch of fuel. So, and people were pretty nervous, too. And I'm not a super nervous flyer, but I'm not a super confident fly, flyer either. So, you know, when something goes on like this, you wonder, what are they What are they not telling us? What's really going on here? But I was the face of calmness because the other people were super distressed, holding hands and everything. But it was no problem. And oh, somehow we got back to Dubrovnik. Oh, this is a, a little video that of Dubrovnik. This is taken from the walls of the old city, the old city. I haven't. I should have previewed these. I pre previewed it a little bit. I didn't watch the whole clip. So we're seat of the pants here. This is Dubrovnik in uh, Croatia. <clears throat> so now I'm going to finish telling my story uh, without these. I'm going to stop share. I haven't done one of these in a long time. Stop screen. Okay. Oh, that's me. So I told you how I got to Dubrovnik and then Makarska, but uh, I didn't really tell you the rest. There's not that much more. After only one, I think, only one night in Makarska, which was probably a mistake. I went to, took the bus to Split, but Split from Split because it's, I didn't dig it. It could be me. Maybe I need to go back and try it out. It's not horrible, but it's, you know, more of a big town. And then just took the bus got some lunch and then went straight to Trogir, T-R-O-G-I-R. -R. And then uh, really enjoyed that for one or two nights. And whoever recommended it was correct. And then uh, took off, came home. I did get to the airport too early. I tend to be maybe a little overcautious on getting to the airport because I figure if I have to wait at the airport an extra hour, so what? It's better than be, being late which would be kind of catastrophic. I got there and waited around forever and then came on home. And that that is Croatia. And if what would I do differently? Well, let's put it differently. If I win again, what would I do? 
Well, I would, I'd have to go, whoever I went with would have to go to Dubrovnik. I would go to some of those islands and a couple of, the, maybe one or two of the islands and one or two of those other little towns. I, I never rent a car. Maybe the people I'll be with will rent a car if I go. That'd be good as long as they don't drive on the other, on the wrong side of the road. I wish I wished I'd gone to Albania, but that might have been too far. I really want to go to Albania just to see what it's like. And I guess I wouldn't do much much differently as uh, as far as where to fly in. If you just want to see the coast, you fly into Split. But if I were to do it on my own, I this time I'd probably fly into Zagreb. There might be more flights and maybe cheaper flights. And I've never seen Zagreb, so there you go. So this was a slideshow just to give a friend of mine an idea of what it's like in Croatia because they asked me. Oh, and she asked me where I would stay. Well, I stayed in hotels, but since that time, I've had real good luck in Europe with Airbnb. In the United States, I don't have such good luck at all, and that's because of the cleaning fee. To me, it's too much. And fees, it's, it's crazy. You'll see, stay here for 95 a, my, a night, but then it ends up to be 210 a night. That's that's a bait and switch for me. I don't like it. It feels like a bait and switch. It's really not a bait and, bait and switch because it's all listed there. But in um, Europe, the cleaning fee doesn't seem to be so gougy. And I've had really good luck in Estonia and Helsinki and... Uh, other European, European places with Airbnb, so I'd, I'd probably look into that. Oh, Sicily. Whew. You want, just, I got to show you this, and I'm kind of proud because it'll give me a, a chance to show off my photo organization. In the last week, I've been organizing the heck out of my photos. So what I'm going to do is see if I can access this place, this Airbnb in Sicily, that will blow you away. So now... I'm going to, you're not, you're probably just seeing me, right? It's all right. I'm looking for, boom, Sicily. Got it here. Let's see if I can find the Airbnb. It was, I take so many, so many photos. Yeah, all right. Here is the Airbnb. What I'll do is another share. And this is good practice for me. This is StreamYard, not zoom share screen share screen choose the one with the that one okay share good so let me so just go through this air this is an airbnb it was about 110 a night hope i don't have any <laughs> embarrassing photos here so i'll just run through it these are not all great photos they're certainly not this is a this is an Airbnb. It had three balconies. Let's run a little video here. You know, uh, then you'll we'll look in the at the balcony. This is an Airbnb. You know, that's pretty nice. Look at this. Here's a killer photo, right? This is the Airbnb. This is just one of the rooms. Look at the painted ceiling. Again, this place was 100 and 110 maybe 110 euro granted but still okay and yeah uh, oh look each one had different hand painted tiles uh, styles on the floor crazy right I'll, what I did was I got a bottle of wine and some takeout oh Whoops, I don't like I don't know if you can hear the sound. I don't like running the sound because I don't know what I said. Anyway, you get the idea. That that was a uh, me plugging Airbnb. And we'll get rid of the share. Stop screen share. Okay, good. I gotta figure out how to do the the slideshows better. Uh maybe I'll create a slideshow ahead of time that you can easily do that in, in photos. But anyway, that's that's Croatia, and uh, 
I'm I'm gonna go I'm going to Trader Joe's now and get a box of wine and some sardines and eggs. That's how I, that's how I roll. And I'll talk to you real soon. Bye. Oh yeah. Make sure you travel lightly, and ch uh, check out the Bradley J Travel YouTube channel where we have completely narrated videos with sound music soundtracks and everything. All right. All right. Uh, by the way, this summer, I don't know if this summer is a good time to travel. You do what you want. Your trip's probably booked already, but if you haven't booked it, I'm hearing stories about you know, the demand's going to be so high, and I don't know how the supply, like how many flights there are going to be. I don't know about the staffing. There have been staffing problems in the recent past on airlines. You do what you got to do, but um, because like, your plans are already made, but be aware there may be hiccups in your trip. All right. Bye now.